Hey guys, Justice here with TomorrowsFilmmakers.com, the largest online film academy in the world, and today I'm going to be showing you how to master your editor in only 20 minutes. Now there are thousands of YouTube videos out there right now on certain aspects of editing, and there's eight hour courses on Lynda.com on how to master the basics of editing, and let's be honest, ain't nobody got time for that. So in the next 20 minutes, I'm gonna be sharing with you what took me months to figure out. We're gonna be going through all the basics of the overview of the software, how to create sequences, import footage, do some basic edits and the tools you'll need, audio, color correcting, and even what settings to use to export your footage. And remember, this is going to show you the basics of editing in 20 minutes. So if you're really good at editing or you own your own videography company and you already know how to edit, Obviously, this video is not for you, okay? So go watch some of our other YouTube videos. This video is for those of you who are just getting into filmmaking, maybe you've never opened your editor before, or maybe you opened your editor, you saw how complicated it looked and it freaked you out and you shut it off, okay? This is the video for you. Now, editing is not just the skills, it's also the creativity. And if you'd like to learn more about any aspect of filmmaking taught by leading professionals in the film industry, you can check out our full academy at tomorrowsfilmmakers.com. Inside our full academy, we have over a thousand training videos and over a hundred hours of content on every single aspect of filmmaking. With over 15,000 students in over 50 countries, our award-winning film course is your one stop to learn all the skills that you need. We also have in-depth editing courses teaching you every major editor on the market today, from Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, and even HitFilm Express, which is a completely free editor. So no matter what editor you use, we will show you exactly how to use it. And the best part is a lifetime membership to our award-winning $800 film course is on sale for only 97 bucks. If you wanna take advantage of this crazy deal, you can check out our website in the link below and head on over to tomorrowsfilmmakers.com to learn more. Now for this training, we're gonna be using Adobe Premiere Pro, which is the most popular editor on the market today. But if you have a different editor, that's okay. You can still follow along with us because most editors are pretty similar. So some things might be a little different, but you can pretty much understand exactly where we're going, even if you have a different editor. So we're gonna be going really fast. We're gonna be going through a lot of information. So grab your notebook, grab your notepad, follow along with us, and let's jump right into it. Now the first thing you're going to want to do, no matter what video it is, is you're going to want to organize your file structure. And it might sound boring and stupid, but it doesn't matter. It is vital, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is my structure on every single video I do. After Effects, Assets, Audio, Complete, Footage, Music, Project, and inside each of these folders will be even more organization. So my footage, if I have an A cam, a B cam, a C cam, or if I'm doing a real estate video, this would be living room, dining room, kitchen, and then you put all the footage in those folders. That way, everything is perfectly organized. You don't just have a bunch of random footage in here and trying to figure out where everything goes. Also, if you're ever wanting to copy and paste this project, into some other folder or give it to a friend to edit. All you have to do is grab the folder and move it knowing that everything is already inside. So have everything organized before you even start. So this is going to be your editor. And a lot of people see this and they're like, oh my gosh, this is insane. I'm too scared. I have no idea what's going on. So let me explain what each of these windows means and how it's actually really simple. So the bottom right is going to be your timeline. And obviously that's where you're gonna be doing most of your editing. So each of these things is video clips that I have imported. So here's a video clip here, here's a video clip here. And as we scroll through, you can kind of see that the video is playing. If I wanted to move it over here, now the video will start here. If I wanted to completely remove it, now there's no video. And so this is where you're gonna be doing all of your editing, adding effects, adding text on the screen, just like we have here. All of your editing is going to be in the timeline. All the video and text are on top, all of the audio is on the bottom. So here's audio, here's music, here's sound effects, and here's all the videos. Now on the top right, this is going to be your program monitor. This is where you're gonna be seeing everything on the timeline. So as I click play, it's actually playing what we see on the program monitor. 
And uh, of course, if we're skimming through, we can kind of see what's happening. So anything that you see right here is going to be on your timeline. Now over here on the bottom left is going to be your project panel. This is where you're gonna be putting all of your sound effects, your clip art, uh, your footage, whatever it may be. Everything is gonna go right in here. So I would import all of my footage here, and if I wanted to use it on my timeline, I would simply grab it and drag it from here onto my timeline. So all of your videos, your footage, audio, everything is gonna go in here, and you're gonna edit here. Now the top left is going to be your source monitor, and that is going to be seeing what you click on on your project panel. So the top left is not your timeline. The top left is what you see inside the project panel. So if I think about, I'm gonna add this clip, I'll double click it. Now I can kind of skim through this clip and see what it looks like. And oh, I'm gonna use this here. And then you can determine I'm gonna put that right here. And so now you can then drag the clip onto the timeline. And then we look and we see that it is playing on the actual timeline. So the top left video is just for looking. It's just for seeing what you want to put on your timeline. It does not affect your actual timeline. And so you grab the clip, you see what you want, you drag it on here, and then you can put it anywhere you want on the timeline. And that is basically it. You have the timeline, the program monitor, the project panel, and the source monitor. Now in Premiere Pro, they do have these tabs at the top which you can use and all it does is it gives you more tools for doing one of those things. So right now we're in the editing. If we wanted to do some color correcting, I would click color and all it does is basically give you more coloring options. So then we've got uh, some things we can do here and we can see the scopes and all that kind of stuff which we'll talk about that in a little bit. And then you go to effects and you've got more effects panels and then graphics and audio. Uh, but to be honest, I spend like 99.9% .9 of my time in the editing panel. All of this you can use but you can also get to each of these effects in the editing panel and that's what I usually do is just use the editing panel. So we'll talk about that more in a minute, but that is basically the overview of your editor. All right, so now we're gonna be creating your project. You have all your footage, you have all your audio, your B-roll, everything is organized. Now all we have to do is go to File, New, Project. And the good thing is this pretty much stays exactly the same. You don't really have to touch any of this. All you want to do is name your project, TF video, and then you find the location of the project folder that you already created. We go to project, we select that folder, and that's it, we click OK. And here is our brand new project. Again, everything exactly the same, there's just nothing on it. So now we have to start importing our footage. So what I, of course, would do is start creating bins down here at the bottom. We've got footage, you've got audio, you've got B-roll, you can start organizing it that way but there's a few ways to import and all you simply have to do is go to file, import, and then you find the footage that you want. So you go to TF video, you go to footage, we go to ACAM, we select it, we click open, and it imports that file and then we can organize it by putting it in certain bins. Or another really, really easy way to do it is to simply drag and drop it. And now it's in the folder that we want. So footage has one item, there it is, and I could even get more specific and do A cam, B cam, and I would suggest doing that as well, but that is how you put the footage in there. So creating a project is really simple because you don't really need to know a bunch of settings. You literally just have to put it in the correct folder. Creating a sequence is when you kinda need to know more details. Now a sequence is going to be your timeline. So if you're shooting in 4K, you need to make it 4K. If you're not shooting in 4K, you need to know what dimensions you want to make the video. So to create a new sequence, we simply go to File, New, Sequence. Now, inside the sequence, they will have all these presets available. And if you know what camera you're shooting with, you can easily do it. So if you're shooting on a red and you're shooting in 5K at 24 frames per second. There you go, 5K, 24 frames per second, you click OK. But most of the time, if you're using a DSLR and you're shooting in 1080p, you simply go to Digital SLR, 1080p, 24 frames per second. But if you wanna get even more specific, you just have to go to Settings, and then you can actually put in the dimensions that you're shooting on. We go to 3840 by 2160, which is 16 by nine in 4K. 
we're going to be exactly 24 fr uh, frames per second. Uh, you can change this if you want it, but I would suggest leaving exactly the same. We label it TF video. We click OK. And now here we are with a 4K 24 frames per second timeline. So if we grab our footage and we bring it on here, and now we have the video and it looks really good. If for some reason we have a sequence that let's do 1080p at 24 frames per second and we try to add our 4K video on there, it's going to be giant. And so we would then have to scale it back down to be able to fit the 1080p timeline. So this is a 1080p timeline with a 4K video on it. And this is a 4K timeline with a 4K video on it. So this is at 100%. This is at 51% to get it to fit on there. So all you need to know is what sequence settings you need. Are you shooting in 4K? Are you wanting to export in 4K? Are you wanting to export in 1080p? But that's how you create a sequence. Now, before we start editing, there's just a few tools that you need to know about. They give you all these tools over here and you can even find more tools, but I personally only use like three, almost 90% of the time. So the first one is going to be the selection tool, which just allows you to select clips, move them around, move you know anywhere you want to go. Next is the razor tool, and this allows you to cut the clips. So if I'm gonna cut this little section out right here, this one right here, I'll simply get the razor tool, I'll cut, I will cut, and now I've cut this section out, which I can move around. I can do whatever I want to do with it, including just completely deleting it. And now I've got this space here, which I can then grab it and then bring them together. And now that space is gone. So the selection tool, the razor tool, and also the track select forward tool. And this basically just means that it will select everything in front of it. So let's say we have these clips. They're all over here. They're all bunched up. And we basically want to move all these clips to be touching this one. Well, I could grab each individual one and then move them around, or I could try to go and select all of them. I've got a bunch of audio and a bunch of video. I'm trying to select everything, make sure I get everything in the selection and then move it over. Or I simply select that. And then whenever I click, it selects everything in front of it and I can move everything. Even if there's a thousand video tracks on top and a bunch of audio on the bottom, if it's in front of this selection tool, it'll select it. And if I move in front of the clip, it selects it and it'll select everything in front of that tool. And those are the basic tools that I use for pretty much 99% of my editing. Next is going to be your effects panel. So we simply click this and we go to effects and now we can see we've got audio effects, transitions, video effects, and transitions. And then you can have a favorite folder, which I usually do. What I typically do is find an effect that I use all the time and then grab it and bring it to a favorites folder. That way it's all right here. But there's only a few that you're really gonna use all the time. And one is called constant power. So we go to audio transitions and constant power. And all this basically does, you grab it and you put it in between two audio clips and it allows them to fade together. And you can determine how long you want that fade to be, or you want it to mostly be fading this audio clip into this one. So most of the fade is gonna happen on this side, or maybe you want it to be super, super small, but that's gonna be one you're using all the time. So you're blending two audio clips together. And you do the exact same thing with video transitions with dissolve, the cross dissolve you put on top of it and that basically just blends them together. Now, we have the same video clip, so it's just gonna be doing a little ghost effect, but I could have the dissolve happen for a really, really, really long time, or it could be almost instant. So we've got a video dissolve and an audio dissolve. And you, of course, can have like a different ones. They've got dip to black, and that basically just means it really quickly goes to black and comes back out. And if you make it really long, it takes a long time to go to black and then a long time to come back out. Um, but these are gonna just gonna be some of the simple effects you will use. If you're gonna be doing any really big effects, you're definitely gonna be wanting using After Effects or sending the video somewhere else. But these are just really simple ones uh, like blurring. You can do like a, a blur if you wanted to put some text on top of the screen. You could do like, you know, a small blur and then have some text come up. There's all those different things that you can do. But that's gonna be your effects panel. So let me show you how I would do some basic editing and importing footage from the project panel to the timeline. So there's this shot right here where I start talking 
and it's just really blank. So I'm gonna add a couple pieces of B-roll in there. So let's just say, for example, I have this video. This is a video of me and Emmaus and you know, we're just walking and we have cameras. It's just a long video of that. Well, I'm going to use this video clip of me starting right here at seven seconds and ending at 12 seconds. So what I could do is of course drag the whole video clip on here and then try to find that spot and cut it and then find the spot and cut it and then I've got this giant video clip that I have to then delete the rest of it. And you can do that if you want to. But the best thing to do is to use these in and out markers. So what you do is you find where the video begins, which is right here. I click that in marker. You find where it ends right there. I click that out marker. And now we have selected this part of the video. Now whenever I grab the video and move it, it only has selected this part. If I would have selected most of the video, now if I grab it and move it, it selects most of the video. If I were to have selected just a tiny little portion, whenever I grab it, it's just that small little portion. Now, whenever you grab from the project panel, it always grabs the video and the audio. And if you don't want the audio, then you'll have to delete the audio, which if it's connected together, you usually have to right click, say unlink, and then that will unlink the audio and video so you can move them universally. So then you delete that. Or what you can do is if you selected your in and out point, right here will be a film clip and an audio clip. And so if you've selected your in and out points, if you just want the video, you can grab this and it will only drag the video. Or if you want just the audio, you grab the audio and it will only drag the audio from that small portion. So what I would do in this situation is, okay, I'm gonna have this B-roll right here. And then like I did before, I'm gonna have me walking with the camera right there. I'm just gonna drag the video. And as you can see, this video is a little too long. So I'm gonna have it stop right there. And then we've got this video here and it stops right there. Uh, you can do anything that you wanna do uh, but that is how you import your footage and just move them around a little bit. Now, just a couple more things to show you is uh, audio. Syncing audio is very important. So right now, the audio connected to this is from the camera and it's horrible. Video on what camera you should buy right now. So I have a separate audio track right here, which is the audio from this microphone. We'll try to say that 4K isn't, and it makes it sound a lot better. So I'd simply grab the audio, I would put it underneath the video. Now you can look at the waveforms and you can try to line them up, you know, because I know that it goes somewhere like that and that's part just online film. That's pretty close, but the best thing to do is to select everything, right click it, click synchronize, and you synchronize the audio, you click okay, and then it will process it and it will synchronize everything. And now the audio is lined up perfectly. And if you have multiple video clips and multiple audio clips, you can sync them all together. Then we simply unlink them, delete the video, and now we have the good audio because we get this, the good audio with the good video. And you'll be syncing audio a lot whenever you're editing. So a simple right-click synchronize will save your life. So after you have edited everything together, next is going to be adding some color correction. So I have this video clip here, which I shot in log, which basically just means it's super flat. I slightly underexposed it so that we can kind of mess with it a little bit. Now you can easily go to the color tab, which you can do, or you can go to the effects panel and grab Lumetri, which is in video effects. It's in color correction. Lumetri color, you grab that and you put that on your video clip and it will have every single color correcting thing you could need. Now, if you don't wanna do that, you can go to the color tab, which basically just puts Lumetri color in the top right and it shows your scopes over here. Now, right now it's super flat. I'm going to add a LUT, which is a completely different topic for a different day. The LUT didn't do a whole lot. And so as you can see, it's really, really dark. So I'm gonna grab the exposure, I'll bring it up and my scopes are rising. Uh, but as you can see, it's super flat. Everything is right in the middle. So I'm gonna add some contrast, which uh, just you know makes it a little bit darker. The shadows definitely need to come down a little bit. 
the highlights like on my face right here, yeah, they're a little bright. And so I could turn down the exposure of everything or I could just bring down those highlights, which is just the, the white part of my face right there. And that's looking a lot better. And you've got saturation, which is just how much color is in there. Like I could look like I'm super, super tan. You know, I think I'm a little, that's a little much. You know, but I could just add a little bit more color. Um, you can do the temperature, which you know right now is kind of blue. If I wanted to make it a little bit more orange, uh, I could make it really green. I could make it pink. Uh, if for some reason I shot it and it was really, really green whenever I, I shot the video clip like this, I could fix that by adding some more pink until it looked normal. And then down here, you've got all the creative stuff. You can add faded film. You can uh, sharpen it. You can add vibrance or more saturation. You could add some tint to the shadow. Shadows. You can do anything you want to do. You can play with it as much as you want. Another thing that I typically use a lot is the HSL secondary, which basically means you can select a certain color and then only affect that color. Now it works pretty well. Sometimes there'll be a little bit of bleeding, but like uh, for example, if I wanted to just select my face, I would find my face right here and as you can see you know it's also affecting the Captain America shield a little bit because it's similar color or say I wanted to just select this tree so if we go here and just select the tree which is about right there and say we wanted to make it super green well I'll turn up the saturation like crazy and and make it super super green and of course if you go too much as you can see you're starting to add some green to random areas but that allows you to select just certain colors. So a lot of the time, if I wanted to, again, boost the green tree, I would only select the tree and just add a little bit of green here and there. But that's the basics of color correction. You would do this to every single clip, coming in here, uh, making all your tweaks, contrast, shadows, uh, the whites, the exposure, all that kind of stuff until it looks really good. All right, so now it is time to export our footage. So we have our video here, we've added some B-roll on top, we've done some color correcting, now we want to export it. Now the work area bar at the top is what you will be exporting and you can easily move it around and you wanna just make sure that the entire video is being exported. Sometimes, you know, if you're not looking, it might be here and then you don't export the last like two seconds of the video. So you wanna make sure that the bar is all the way at the end of the video and if you have a song that might play for another 10 seconds and fade out, make sure that the work area bar goes all the way to the end of that song. After that, we go to File, Export, Media. So there's two things you're gonna be paying attention to, the format and the preset. Now the format is a bunch of different things. You can add uh, you know, an animated GIF or GIF, whatever you wanna say, I do not care. You could do an MPEG-2 Blu-ray, you can do a QuickTime movie, you can do all those things, but you wanna stick with H.264. That's gonna be the best settings and the best format. Format, H.264. The preset, you could basically just click Match Source, which basically just means whatever the sequence is, that's how it's going to export it. Right now our sequence is uh, just a 1080p timeline, so I'll probably go down to high quality 1080p HD and you want to export the video and audio. And now down here, you can add a little bit more things. So the width is 1920 by 1080, the square pixels, uh, hardware encoding. You don't really have to mess with any of this. Uh, bit rate is the only thing that you really want to pay attention to. Now bit rate is a little bit more confusing, but you have constant bit rate and variable bit rate. Now constant bit rate basically means that whatever target bit rate you set, that's what it's going to be using for pretty much every single shot. So if I set a target bit rate of 10, no matter what video it is, if it is a video of a blank wall, it's going to use 10 bit rate. If it's a video out of a moving vehicle that would require a lot more bit rate, it's going to use 10 bit rate. So it is going to only use what you select, which is okay if you're maybe exporting a lower quality video or you don't really care that much and you just need to get it exported very quickly but variable bitrate is going to be the highest quality. What that means is it allows the bitrate to fluctuate when needed. So if we set the target bitrate to 30, that's gonna be the target bitrate, but with the shot of the blank wall, it might only use 10. Or if there's a shot that maybe needs 15, it'll use 15. Or maybe a shot that needs 22, it'll use 22 because it's variable depending on the, on the detail inside the shot. 
So the highest quality bitrate setting is going to be variable bitrate to pass. Now, if you're exporting a 1080p timeline like I am here, you really don't have to go much higher than 10 or 15. I mean, it's really not gonna make that much of a difference. But if you're shooting in 4K, I would say to at least have maybe 35 or 40. If you have around there, that's going to give you the highest quality. Now, obviously, as you get to a higher bitrate, the estimated file size grows. And so we're at 129 megabytes. If the bitrate was at 10, we're only talking 29 megabytes. And, you know, that's not that big of a deal, but this is only like a five second clip. If you're exporting a 25 minute video with a bunch of B-roll, I mean, you're getting into the gigs and maybe even 11 gigs if you get this high, but it's going to give you the highest quality. Now, sure, if you wanted to, you could just put this at the top every single export, but it's not going to add anything except longer export times. But it also depends on how small of a file size you need. For example, this is a 20 minute video here at 4K, and at a variable bitrate to pass at 10, we're already over two gigs. And if it's going straight to YouTube, YouTube will only allow two gigs. So in this instance, you would have to just try to get it under two gigs. But if it didn't matter about the file size, I mean, then yes, you could then make it, you know, variable bitrate 40 and you'd be eight and a half gigs, but you would get the highest quality possible. So 1080p, keep it at 10. If it's 4K, I would say between 35 or 40 for variable bit rate to pass, and that will give you the highest quality. You can go to audio, make sure that your sample rate is the highest it can be. Your bit rate is at 320. Uh, you can do use maximum render quality. That's pretty much it. And then you just wanna make sure that it's going into your complete folder, which you already set up. So we click it. We go to the TF video, we go to complete, and then you could name it TF video complete. Click save, and that is all. And then you click export. And now we're exporting our video. And now if we go to our complete folder, there's the video. There's all of our B-roll, and then there's me at the end randomly getting up out of the chair. But that's the video that we made. We edited that together. We added the color correction, we exported it, we made our sequence, we made our project, and now everything is organized because that's exactly how it should be done. So like I said, guys, this is just a bare bones basics, like how to import footage, how to make certain cuts, put things together, export the video, all the basics that you need to get started. Now the best way to learn is to simply practice. So go outside, go film a bunch of shots of trees and leaves blowing in the wind or whatever you wanna do, bring it into your editor, create that sequence, add some music, and then start chopping them up, putting it together, learning how to use the tools, how to move things around, and then export it and see how the video looks. That is the best way to learn. You can watch thousands of tutorials, but the best thing to do is to literally go out and start practicing with it. So I hope this video has really helped you guys out and you can understand a little bit more how your editor works. If you'd like to learn even more about how to use your editor, whether it's Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, Hit Film Express, Premiere Pro, you can check out our full academy at tomorrowsfilmmakers.com. We have over a thousand training videos and over 15,000 students just like you wanting to pursue their dream as a filmmaker. So if you'd like to see more videos just like these, click subscribe because we add videos just like this all the time. And if you'd like to take your filmmaking career to the next level, click the link below and head on over to tomorrowsfilmmakers.com and learn all the skills that you need to succeed.